Welcome back to the virtual classroom for Comp 3077 Online with Excel 2013 and your online professor, Mr. Mike Sloan, with the Lawrence Kinlan School of Business at Fanshawe College. As I mentioned in my previous videos, I may or may not be your professor for this course, but if you're taking an online section with another professor or you've chosen to go online for a few of the lectures and you're in a classroom section, that's fine. I just happen to be the guy that's going to be narrating all of these videos. So I'm the online professor for the YouTube playlist, the virtual classroom, but you still need to go by your specific professor's due dates and guidelines, times. As I also mentioned, I, ha I will try not to mention due dates or times or anything like that in these videos, only general kind of rules like due by the end of the week, due by your professor's deadline, which is usually the case. Um, so, got that out of the way, and if you are watching this video, this is going to be your second lecture in week one. Typically in a week you'll have just one lecture. It'll demonstrate the case, you'll go and get the case done, then you do the quiz on your own, and you're done for that week, except for the test weeks and makeup week. Uh, week one has two lectures, so I am assuming, if you're getting into this one, that you have watched the introductory lecture to the course, and you've already taken the quiz on FOL. Okay, if you haven't watched the Welcome to the, uh, the Virtual Classroom video or part, the Part 1 lecture for Week 1, you need to go do that. If you've already done that, you are ready to go and do your first case. So we're going to introduce you to a platform called SAM in this video. And SAM is a learning platform separate and distinct from FOL. You have to pay to use it. So essentially this is going to be like your virtual textbook. Uh, but you don't have to get the key code. You don't have to go to the bookstore and purchase and pay for the key code right away. You're going to be given free access for the first few weeks. And then after three weeks, it will require you to put in a key code to keep using SAM. And there's no other option. There used to be legislation that allowed you to have an alternative path if you couldn't afford to pay for it. Now, it's, this is the way the course is. You have to purchase it. If you can't purchase it, you won't be able to pass the course. Um, it's just, we've learned that it's, it's the best way in terms of usability and getting your hands on and actually applying the students. So that's the way it has to be done. Uh, this key code thing that I'm talking about, it's in the neighborhood of $100. And I know for other courses you have textbooks and you get to keep them. But I mean, it, essentially, I, I think you're going to get more out of this. Um, but you can't get out of it. I'm just going to say that one more time. You, you have to purchase this. Um, you know, we're not trying to be rude about it. It's just... The course will work very, very well for you, um, assuming you, well, the course won't work at all if you don't buy the key code. So I think I've, uh, I think I've beat that one to death a little bit there. Go buy your key code, have it by week three. And if you take a picture of it and submit it to the FOL Dropbox named Save My Key Code by week two, you get 1% extra credit. Uh, we're going to talk about the SAM case process, which of course is only um, doable once you set up your account. We will set up accounts today, and that doesn't matter if you have your key code yet. Um, and we're also going to mention as we're going through that that you should always be saving. And then usually after the case, you would go ahead and take your quiz. I'll actually go through the quiz process right before we do the case because we're going to end this video off with completing your first case. So unlike most of the weekly lecture videos, this one has a little bit of extra stuff going on in it uh, because we're trying to introduce you to this different learning platform. And then following this week's lecture video, you'll have one each week you have a case and it'll just complete the case. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of file management in this video as well because it's our first case and I just want to go over a few things. So just bear with me. This is a very simple process. I just want to make sure everybody understands it. And it might be, you know, a little simple for some of you that have been using computers all your lives and you're comfortable with this stuff. But I have to start uh, down below to make sure everybody's there and then we all learn together and get really good at Excel. So first place I'm going to go is Fanshawe Online. And I, so I've logged in and I've gone to my course homepage. If you have an online, if you're in an online section, you will likely have this, which is the direct link to the SAM platform right from your course homepage. Otherwise, if you're not in an online section, most of the professors have posted it somewhere in content. You guys should have it in the About Comp 3077 module. If you go into the SAM student manual, the link's there. And it's also posted in the All About Comp 3077 file. So you should already know where the link is because your, your job in the first two videos was to have gone over these files already. Um, so we know about all this stuff. Let's go right to SAM and set up an account. So I'm at sam.sengage.com. As soon as you go there, it'll add uh, this little bit of extra to the URL. Don't worry about that. All you need is that first part, that main address. 
So go there and click on new user. And remember, as I'm going through this, that you can pause at any time if you want to keep up with me. It's not like this is a live lecture. So I'm going to try not to waste a lot of time as I'm going through this, but you guys, if I'm going too quickly, just pause. Um, very quick before I start this. If you have purchased SAM in another semester, the odds are it's probably, well, probably, here's the deal. In the fall of 2014, we upgraded our, our SAM contract with the publishers to Office 2013. Previous to that, it was Office 2010. So unless you've purchased a key code in, the fall, in September of 2014 or later, your SAM account is no longer valid for this course. It, you might be able to use it in other courses if they're still using Office 2010, but I, I doubt that would be happening anywhere on campus here at Fanshawe. So I'm sorry about that. I know there are a few of you that just bought key codes this past summer, and you know, depending on when you're watching this video, I mean, you may be watching this video two years later and it doesn't matter. And if you have purchased a key code anytime after September 2014 for this course, you don't have to buy it again. Okay, you can keep using it, but anytime before that, you need to buy a new key code. I'm sorry about that. So you need an institution key. For right now, for the first few weeks of the course, we are not going to ask you for your key code. So between now and then, buy your key code, save it somewhere, keep it safe, take a picture of it, upload it to the Dropbox by the end of week two, get that 1% extra credit, just keep it safe until week three when we ask for it. You'll go to log in one day and it'll ask for the key code and you put it in and you just pick up where you left off. For right now, all you need is the institution key. And in my course, I have it posted right on the course homepage in the news section. And I also have it in a couple other of the files there in the about comp 3077 section. So it's T as in Thomas, 2118754. So I'm gonna copy mine right in there. You can do the same thing or just type it in. It's T2118754. So pause the video and get that in there. Okay, good, now hit submit. It should then ask you or tell you, confirm institution. It'll tell you, this is Fanshawe College, yep, that's me. Now let's go ahead and set up a profile. So you're bypassing the whole key code thing. We're allowing you to use this for free for a few weeks. So you don't need middle initial. I would only bother putting the required fields in. I'm gonna put my stuff in here. I'm gonna set it up with a special FOL email I have. Okay at fanshawonline.ca, type it in again, make sure you get it right, stare at it a few times. I would recommend using your Fanshawe Online email just because it's easier to remember it's the one you associate with anything that's Fanshawe. Just make sure you type it in correctly. A lot of people type in .com by accident and then they forget how to log in. Your professor can always go back and access your account if it's not working, so remember that. Get a password, type it in again, maybe use the same password as your Fanshawe Online. And you can use any email, I just think it's better to use your Fanshawe Online because it's Fanshawe related. If you use another email, you can always stick an extra email in here, like just for secondary purposes in case you're, you're worried they might not communicate with you at the one email or you might not keep it that long, I don't know. Um, and then you can choose from a variety of security questions. Uh, mother's maiden name is always a good one for me. It's Italian. There you go hit save and obviously you can pause and fill that in yourself and make sure you're in if you guys have a computer that you brought in from another country you might not have it it's picking up the computer time right probably so make sure that you are in the eastern time zone so if I schedule cases or your professor schedule stuff that it's set for the right time zone okay and if you can go back and revise if you screw something up you can go back a page just hit revise so I'm looking at this this is all okay I'm gonna click confirm I'm going to get to a page that asks me to agree to the terms and conditions. I'm going to ask you to pause the video and read this entire thing. I'm sure you will all do that. Very good. Thank you. And click I agree. Okay. And you're in. It's that simple. So three weeks from now, uh, well, depending on when you're watching this video, if you're watching this video in the third week, you're probably, it's probably already asking you for your key code. So it would have been one extra step they put in there after your institution key. But if you're setting this up earlier on, you'll be able to set it up and set up your account without the key code. And then as soon as the publisher flips the switch for us, you will then have to prove to them that you've paid for access. And once you log in, all your assignments, all your grades, everything will still be there. Okay, you'll just pick up where you left off. But if you don't have the key code at that point, this will be sometime during week three. I'm not gonna name an exact date. Your professor will tell you what the date is in the semester that you are in. You will not be able to continue working. So I'm gonna log out, okay? And I'm gonna show you, 
of just kind of where you land every time you log in. So you should be able to access your account right away, even if you log back out. Okay. And I had no trouble logging in. Sometimes it depends on the browser you're in. When you go to log in, if you actually didn't hit log out the time before when you left, Sam, a little message will pop up that says, hey, you're logging back in and we have an indication that you're still logged in on another computer. Is that okay? And you just click okay. It's not a big deal. Um, other than that, there's nothing quirky about the login. It'll always take you to the activity calendar. Now, the calendar itself, we will never use in this course because we keep our assignments open for the entire semester. So here's how this works. Um, you will go to an activity list. As soon as you join a section, you'll see a collection of assignments here. Your professor in your section has given you a, a specific weekly deadline. You will have this stuff submitted to Sam by the weekly deadline, and your professor will go in right at that time and either export to Excel or print the grades, so they have a record of them when they were due, but then the assignment still stays open. You can still continue to complete it or do it whenever you want. You just only get credit if you do it by the due date. But instead of cutting you off the due date and not allowing you to see the assignment after that, which we don't want to do, we still want you to have the ability to do it before the test. We just simply tell you, this is when it's due. If your grade's not there at that point, when we go and pull the grades, you're not getting a mark. Unless, of course, there's a special reason for this and you've given your professor advance notice of that. Okay, it's all about the advance notice. So in order to see assignments, the first thing you need to do is join a section. So we've talked about Sam and what it is here. And now we're going to join the section right here. So we're on this part. Um, so let's get back over there. Join a section. Go to sections right here. Go to join a section and under join a section you're not going to see a whole lot of sections if you're coming into this course uh, right when it, the videos are brand new and fresh which would be fall 2014. Um, over time this will probably start to get pretty big and start to spill on the second pages and stuff so to slim it down a bit if you see a lot of sections here it might look a little different than my screen go here and choose to only see the sections from your instructor okay now I'm actually on multiple sections here which I can fix ultimately but I'm going to pick the proper section for me to be in for my students this semester it happens to be this section that may not be your right section your professor should have indicated which section to go into in FOL so make sure you know you're going into the right section don't just go into this section because I'm showing you that in the video this is just an example um, if this happens to be fall 2014 and you're in this section then go ahead and go in it so if you click on it it gives you the info on it it tells you this is blah 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 this is when um, I don't know why these guys are all professors on my sections. I gotta fix that. Uh, okay, so okay, I just sorted out that instructor thing quickly. It's kind of nice when when you're recording the video, you can just pause it and do something, and you guys would never know the difference. So uh, here, if if you are getting into later terms and you're noticing that the the sections are really piling up, just choose the instructor you know is yours. Hopefully, you know who your instructor is, and then only the sections that they're responsible for will come up. So for this semester, uh, my students will be joining this section. Others in other sections should be joining other sections. So make sure you're aware of who your instructor is. They may not even be listed here if you're, if you're watching this video and you're in another term, but they will be there not in the video, in your login. You should see them there because they will have set up a section and told you either in class or in Fanch Online what section to join. And even if they haven't told you, usually we name the sections so you can figure out what's what. We'll put the section number in there or the day we see you. So you just simply go over here to the right, all the way over. So again, I've clicked on sections, join a section, sort by professor if you want, and then once you see your section, click right here and you are in. We should have it set to auto enroll unless it's a special section like for the test or something. And usually for tests, you will have to join another section and you'll be in it just for the test and then we'll remove you from it. It's kind of a nice security measure for us. So once you're in the section, when you go back to activities, again, it always takes you first to the calendar, which is not, it's, it's not relevant to you guys because we don't set deadlines for assignments. We just open them up uh, for the term and then you, you just take them and hopefully you finish them by the deadline and get credit for them. So if you go to activity list, you will see everything that you have to do. And, and as you should know by now, you have quizzes using the SAM platform, but they start in week two because your first quiz is on FOL in week one, but your cases start in week one. So this week we do have a case and we're going to complete that together in this video. Uh, just a couple things to go over quickly before we do. Okay, so let's go ahead and try out a quiz. Now, in most weekly videos, we will not pay attention to the quizzes. We're not gonna be getting into the quizzes, 
This is the hands-on exercise for you guys that you do after you witness the case demonstration from us. You complete the case, and using our demonstration, you can pretty much get 100% without even trying that hard. The quiz you do on your own, and even the quizzes you can get 100% on because we provide you the answers via the training. So I'll show you what I mean here. So right now in the video, we are going, we're jumping down here to the quiz process because we're going to do the case process and talk about always be saving and stuff like that as we complete the first case. And then from this week forward, the videos will mainly involve just the case completion for that week. I'm only going over the quiz process here in week one because I want to make sure you guys understand how it works. The week one quiz itself was taken on FOL, and that's the only quiz that we have that's in Fanshawe Online. Okay, the rest of the quizzes are on SAM. So starting in week two, you will have a quiz here. So you click on the quiz and it gives you a little explanation. Here it actually defines how the quiz is graded. So as long as you get a 70% on this, you'll get full credit. They're worth 1% each and that does add up. Over the course of the term, you have 11 quizzes, it's 11%. You can't make these up if you miss them, so you gotta have them in by the deadline. Um, and they're gimmies. I mean, the training will show you how to answer the questions in the quiz if you can't get the 70. So you just gotta get a 70 to pass and if it's a 70, that means when it goes over to FOL, whether it's a 72 or a 95, you just get a full credit point, okay? If it's below a 70, even if it's like a 68, you're not getting full credit. We just, we pull the grades on a due date and it is what it is. So make sure you get at least a 70 on it. You can take it as many times as you want. You can keep taking them after if you want to use them to practice for the test. So I'm going to go ahead here and click start. Uh, the quizzes should work pretty much in any browser. I don't know if they'll work on your smartphone, they might. Um, I haven't tried that yet, but uh, they'll work in any browser with the proper plugins, Mac, PC, doesn't matter. There's some small, small compatibility issues with the cases on a Mac, but as long as you're running the latest version of Office and you're in Office 2013 on a PC, you shouldn't have much of anything. So um, exit Excel, This here. so here's a quiz question. And the first quiz, I mean, it's pretty simple stuff. It says, do not use Alt F4 or Alt Space. Um, Okay, so if they don't want me to do it that way using the keyboard shortcut, I'm just going to go up here and hit the X. And cool, answer correct. That was an easy one. Um, now, you're going to notice as you start to take these quizzes, they, it's not regular Excel. This is, looks like Excel 2013, but it's actually a simulated environment that tracks your behavior. So you can see down here you have three attempts. So if I deliberately screw up here, um, let's try and right click and insert a row there. Oops, no, that's not the right spot. Retry. So I'll try it again, and I'll go here, and I'll go, oh, that's not the right spot. If I do that three times, I will run out of attempts. That will turn to a zero, and it will bump me to the next question. So just be aware that it, you're going to get these wrong if you keep going to the wrong place. And if that happens and you can't get through and get at least a 70, you just use the training and bring some headphones to the lab if you're using the training. There's literally audio that will walk you through each question. It just hands you the answers. So we don't go out of our way usually to, to help you out on the quiz unless you're in lab in the live classroom because the quizzes are meant for you to try and do on your own. Okay, and if you can't get through them, you can use the training. Um, if you want to skip around, uh, just go here and you can go to any question at any time that you still have attempts left with. If you don't have any attempts left, it'll be gray like that and it'll tell you whether you got it right or wrong. It'll be a red X or a green check. And that's the quiz, that's, that's how they work. So if you're, if you're done with it and you're sick of it, hit exit. At the end of the quiz, uh, it will tell you how you did. So I only got one question right, which means I did not get a 70. I got a 7%. So I'd probably have to try and take it again. Um, I would advise that if you want to get your 1%. As long as it's done by your weekly deadline, you're going to get credit. So the quiz every week you do on your own. Okay, we'll demonstrate the case for you. And I'll try and remind you in the videos, hey, don't forget you got a quiz. Any week you got a case. But you're going to have to go ahead and do that by yourself. If you get stuck, use the training. The training, I'm not going to pull it up in the video, but it's pretty neat. It walks you right through the questions. It's got audio, everything. So, I mean, this is an online course. Even for the students in the classroom setting, you should be using that as a helpful tool. Uh, so let's get into the case process. So for 4% of your final grade every week, you get to complete a case except for weeks 6, uh, week 12, uh, 13, sorry. Week 6, 13, and 14. So week 6 is a test. Week 14 is your second test, and the week right before the second test, you have a makeup week where you're allowed to make up one case. You can't make up any quizzes, just one case. All the details for that are on Fanshawe Online. Not going to go through it in the video. It's all there. Um, anything you feel like you've missed or I'm going too fast, and you're like, whoa, whoa, how do I even know where we're at or anything, 
It's because you haven't gone through these files yet. So in Fanch Online content here, we're about to start our first case. Everything about how the course break down, breaks down, how much the cases are worth, what SAM is, what we're doing here, whether or not your computer will work. That's very important right now. That's why I jumped over here. We're about to complete our first case. It's very rare that you have compatibility issues if you're using a PC and you got Office 2013. If you have Office 2010 or some previous version of Office and you're using it, it's not going to work. Okay, I'm just telling you flat out. Now, that does not mean we are preventing you from getting 100% on these assignments because as a full-time or even part-time student here at Fanshawe College, all you have to do is go to the help desk and they will give you for free Office 2013. So this file explains all of this. It tells you where the help desk is, which room it is on main campus. It talks about how different versions of Excel are not going to work. And it also addresses one minor compatibility issue with the Mac. Um, if you're using a Mac, you can also get a partition, like you can get a partition to have Windows put on it, and then you can have Office 2013, just like everybody with their PC. But most people with Macs do not want Windows on their computer. So they use the latest version of Mac for Office, which for the most part will earn you 100% on these cases. But when you run into cases that have choices and options you have to choose, like themes and colors, you may lose like six to eight points here and there and stuff. If you insist on using your Mac, it is your job to tell your professor, hey, I used a Mac this week. I can see that I lost some points be just because I'm on a Mac. And most professors will just adjust the points when they move the grade over to FOL. But, I mean, it's not, it still works. You just have to stay on top of it, okay? Um, but if you're really running into trouble, you know, this is not an online program. So it is not our job to make sure this is compatible no matter what. It's just an online course that you're lucky to have in you know, your regular traditional classroom program. So if you get stuck, you just go to the lab. There are labs all over campus with computers that will work for this course. So this file goes through everything, talks about free MS Office. If it's not compatible, check this out. Like this is why you need to read, but it's, uh, this is what you need to read, sorry. But it's, there's not a lot of issues that we actually have. So I just want to address that this one time before we start our first case, get it all out in the open. Now we're well, we're probably a little bit over 20 minutes in the video now, so I want to get into this first case. It is an easy case, but still, we want to try and keep this lecture fairly normal length. Uh, that's not even a word, length. <laughs> so notice here, we're about to start our first case. You get two submissions allowed. So this is a little different than the quiz. You're going to pull up this window, and it's going to give you an instructional file, and it's going to give you a working file. You're going to follow these instructions right here, make changes to this file, save it, and then turn it right back in here. That's how simple it is. Go pause the video, rewind a bit, watch that again. That's all you're doing. Having said that, a lot of students will run into trouble because part of your job, one of the first steps in every set of instructions, is to rename this file. And you would not believe, because of the technology we have today that a lot just does everything for us, we don't have to name files anymore, how many students have trouble simply naming a file? and noticing when they go to turn it in that the name it's supposed to have is, is right here and they still can't figure out why isn't it working. Why is it? This is why it's not working. If, if it's not submitting for you, it's because you don't have the file name properly. You need to look at what the name's supposed to be and rename it. So I'm gonna go through that in detail in the first couple cases after that. I'll kind of expect that you guys just know how to do it. Uh, so the instructions are right here. The instructions you can just grab and just open them up. You can let your computer throw them into downloads, throw them into the temp folder, whatever. Okay, It doesn't matter where they go because you don't need to save them. You can get back to them at any time. It's not a big deal. In fact, in most terms, we actually provide the electronic versions of instructions in a hard copy version so that you can have it sitting next to your computer while you're working. Um, as of right now, the publishers have still not given us all the cases yet. So I'm in the fall 2014 semester. Later on, you guys have probably gotten a hard copy, but if you haven't gotten a hard copy yet, it's simply because we don't have all the cases yet and it's not ready. Um, if you're watching this in later semesters, this is probably not an issue. You probably already have the option to get one. As soon as we have all the cases put together, we'll put a single PDF file in FOL that has all the hard copy versions compiled together for the whole semester. And then you can just print that and use that for notes and go through that. No matter what, you'll always have the electronic version available. Okay, which most people still download every week because they can cut and paste text and stuff like that and put it right in. So here's the project description. You'll notice I had to hit. Uh, you'll notice I had to hit enable editing. Enable editing is something that's very common when you're using a Windows computer. When you download something from the web, they just want to make sure you know it's safe, and then you click enable editing, and you're okay. So the instructions, just grab them, open them, put them wherever it doesn't matter. This file, however, right here is very important that you pay attention to where you save it. 
If you're in a lab and you click on this and you just hit open, like I'm in Internet Explorer right now, for example, you are going to put it into a temp folder on that lab computer and you're going to save it. And no matter how many times you save it, when you go to close that file, you're not going to find it again. It's next to impossible to dig these files out of a temp folder, even if you search for the name in Windows on these lab computers. You have to be a good file manager and you have to pay attention to where you're saving your file. So in the case instructions, and I'm going to jump back to those, it says right off the top, get this file and then rename it this. So I'm suggesting to students throughout the semester that instead of downloading it and then making a copy of it or renaming it or opening it and going save as or rename it, you just rename it when you're downloading it. Okay, now not all browsers will allow you to do this. I'm using Explorer now because that's what all the labs have. I don't like Explorer the best, that's for sure, but that's what the labs have. So when I click on the file here, which I already did, I'm going to go here and go save as. I'm not just going to hit save because then it's going to default probably into the downloads folder which is fine, but you have to know to go and look there. I'm going to go save as, and I'm just going to put it right on my desktop. It's always the easiest place to put it because it's easy to find. And as I'm saving it, I'm going to go right here, and my job is just to change that little number one to a number two. That's it, guys. That is it. If you can't upload this file at the end of the assignment, what you're telling me is that you can't change a, a single character in a file name. And you don't want to be that student. Now, I never am that hard on students that can't do this. I'm just trying to illustrate to you how important it is that good file management is still occurring here. It wasn't just like a grade 6 computer class thing that you thought you learned then and now you never have to deal with it anymore. You need to pay attention to how you name your files and where you put them. So I save it on the desktop. Minimize here. Minimize the instructions. Um, oh, where is it? What's going on? I can't find it. Well, maybe I wasn't paying attention. Maybe I didn't save it on the desktop. Let's open folder and see where I put it. Oh, I put it in my username folder. You know, isn't that just great? Like in the middle of the video, and I'm not going to redo this video because this is exactly what I'm talking about, okay? Pay attention to where you are saving it. Mine now is on my desktop. That's now at least I have the name right. Like I mean, you know, that's just that I deserve it. I was being hard on you guys. So the first step in the case was to rename it, uh, save it, and then rename it. So what I was trying to show you was to save it and rename it at the same time. And don't ever overwrite the extension. By the way, I know on campus a lot of the computers show you the extension. Most computers don't in Windows. That's fine. Just don't overwrite it. Don't type it out again. All you have to deal with is the file name. So my file's there. I open it up. And again, I'm going to have to click Enable Editing here because I downloaded it from the web. Now, Enable Editing, and I'm going to start working in a second here. I just want to show you guys if I was using Chrome, for example, which is a little bit different. Um, let's log in. Uh, that's another sample. Oh, no, excuse me. Okay, here I am. It's going to take me to the assignment calendar. I go to the activity list. I go to my week one case. I go here. I already have the instructions, so I'm just grabbing the file. I'm going to grab it right here. So in Chrome, I have the option immediately to save it where I want to save it. So I could rename it right here and put it on the desktop, and I could overwrite the one I already have. Um, Chrome is a browser that I love because you can set all these options however you want. If you really want to avoid doing this, here's how I did that in Chrome. Click on the settings in Chrome. Go to Click on the, the options button, the little three, little three thing there in the... I don't even know what you would call those. Little three horizontal lines, okay? Go to settings. In settings, you're going to go to advanced settings. So once the settings come up, you're going to scroll down a bit. Okay, scroll down, 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 down. Show advanced settings right here in Chrome. Go down, 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 almost to the bottom right here. Download locations. Typically when you get Chrome, it defaults to downloading stuff in downloads. According to your username, you have a downloads folder. I mean, it's not that hard to find it, you know? It, just the worst is when you do this in a lab and you lose the file in the temp folder and you don't know where it is. I have set it to automatically save it to my desktop and I've also set it here to ask me each time I download it just to make sure because sometimes if I'm downloading media or something I don't want it on my desktop and put it somewhere else. So Chrome's a great browser for you to use on your home computer to avoid ever trying you know getting these files lost and stuff like that. When you're in the labs though I just say you know you're usually stuck with Explorer 
So go down to the bottom of that Save As thing and save on the desktop. I think I've spent enough time on this. Again, I won't do this every week, but it is very important that you guys understand you need to watch your file names and you need to pay attention to where this stuff is saving. Okay, so once you get it downloaded, you can leave this window open because I'm going to use this as soon as the case is done. And your job is very simple. Go to the case file, make sure your name is there, and then right away you pretty much go to the next worksheet every single time. So clicking around to worksheet to worksheet, I mean, this stuff was already kind of covered in my first lecture. The basic Excel structure, the basic Excel, Excel anatomy, what Excel actually is as an application. You guys should be comfortable with this already before you start your first case. So if you're not, go back to that initial lecture, read through that material. Once you're comfortable with it, get the first case done. So the first case here, this is going to be our easiest case by far. Uh, we're just going to follow the steps and get it done. That's what you do every week. It just gets more and more difficult as we move on. So project steps. Select the admission analysis worksheet. We did that. Okay, we've checked. We know our names there, all that stuff. So let's go to the next worksheet. We already did that. Enter the text Northwest Hospital in A1. So I'm going to type Northwest Hospital. I'm going to click in A1, click in the cell with your mouse, and just type it in. So each of these cells is like their own little version of a tiny little Word document. You're putting stuff into the cell. You can, you can enter lines and wrap text. You can do stuff like that. But for the, for the purpose of this one, we're just typing in Northwest Hospital. Once you're done, hit Enter. Get in the habit of hitting Enter. Don't just start clicking around other cells. When you're putting text in cells, that's fine. But as soon as you start doing basic formulas and functions, when you click in the middle of a formula to another cell, you're starting to add that cell in there. So you have to be careful. Um, so this next one, they want us to enter admissions analysis. And I'm going to type in admissions. You can see Excel is pretty smart. It's already trying to autocomplete with a phrase that's already typed into the document that starts with the word admissions. So that's fine. Just, just go along with it, but just keep typing what you want. So admission analysis. Now, some of you may no have noticed that on purpose I skipped the S in there. Okay. Typos matter when you're using a platform like SAM. This is a computer. Okay. It's grading you like a computer. It's either right or it's wrong. So if you've typed admission analysis and the instructions called for admissions analysis, you will actually lose. You could lose up to like 10 points depending on how long the case is and how many other steps there are. This is why we allow you to submit them twice. So your job is to go through, make all these changes, always be, so I'm going to hit Control S on my keyboard. I'm going to go up here and click this little disk thing. I'm going to go here and I'm going to go File, Save, okay? All of these three things I just did, the keyboard shortcut, hitting the icon, or going File, Save, are all doing the same thing. They're saving the file. Save the file throughout the case process because this SAM platform, it will actually allow you to upload the file at the end without even closing it. So my hardcore rule here, let's call it a hardcore rule because you, you do not skip over this rule, is always be saving and always close your file before you submit it because then you know you've saved it because it prompts you to save it when you close it. So I'll try and do those best practices in each of my cases. But again, lots of little uh, administrative things that I'm covering here with the first case and it, it won't usually take this long. but. I've typed this in incorrectly, that's fine. We're gonna leave it that way. I'm gonna show you that you do get it wrong if you type it that way. Another option here is to actually cut and paste. So right from the beginning, I'm gonna show you how to properly cut and paste because I know you're all gonna do it, okay? Copy and paste, Let's don't cut, just copy and paste. Right click copy or control C on your keyboard. You probably know that much. Go back to Excel. So I'm gonna delete on my keyboard what's in that cell. Now, I can just paste it in there. Okay, now what's going to happen when I paste it in there is that it's going to take the formatting from the Word document. So I'm going from one Microsoft document uh, to a Microsoft spreadsheet to another Microsoft application. So it's going, to, it's going to remember what the formatting is. I don't want to do that. And in most cases, SAM instructions are asking you to format things in certain ways. So if you're going to insist on copying and pasting, here's how you would do it. Now I'm going to hit Control Z on my keyboard. Another good shortcut. That's for undo. I could have hit that right there too. Um, I'm going to right click before I paste and I'm going to go right here and I'm going to match the destination formatting. By doing that it only takes the characters and then whatever the format was in here set for that cell it will keep it that way. So that way I'm not going to lose points for having some silly formatting in there. Okay. Another way yet to do it is just to still you can just paste it that way and then go here afterward and match destination formatting. So I should be, let it be known, I showed you guys this at the very beginning. 
okay, that if you're going to insist on cutting and pasting, because sometimes you have big long phrases with words that are hard to spell, it is better to cut and paste it. Always paste it without carrying the formatting over or you may lose points when you go to submit the file. Okay, now I'm going to deliberately go back in there and you can go into the formula bar or the cell when you want to do edits. And I'm going to take out the S because I want to get that wrong and show you that it's easy to just fix and resubmit. So we'll do that at the end. So next step, okay, that took way too long for those steps. Let's start getting going here. Edit the text in cell A3 so that it reads admissions 2012 to 2015. So it already reads admissions 2010. So go here into the formula bar and just change that zero to a two on your keyboard. So everything I'm doing is just very minor edits. You're probably seeing the workspace operate the way I taught you. Like when you sit on a cell, which is any one of these boxes in the spreadsheet, it tells you where you are in the name box. You can type a cell into the name box, like H40, for example, and it'll go right to H40 for you when you hit enter. So Excel is not a hard thing to get used to. It's, it's, like, it's like graph paper that you used in math class way back when, but it's electronic, and all the boxes are numbered, and it's very, very useful for organizing information and data. And that's what, starting with the week one case, we're doing. So enter cell E10, enter in cell E10. Uh, 28,835. So go here. They just missed one of their figures there. So let's put that in and hit enter. And now I'm going to use autofill to fill the range F10 using the formula and cell F5. So all this is really saying is copy. So here is a formula. If I sit on this cell, you can see a number in it. If I look in the formula bar, you can see this number is the result of a sum function. That's called a function that's adding up this, 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 and this. So because this is the first case, we're going to stop here and I'm going to teach you a few quick things. Number one, in Excel, as soon as you go beyond just typing simple numbers and text into cells, as soon as you're adding something, it has to start with an equal sign, no matter what. It always has to start with an equal sign. And you don't necessarily need to use a function. Like if I went here and I just wanted to add one thing to another, I could go equals, and then I can go pick these up. You don't have to type them in. You can just pick them up. I'm going to encourage you guys to always click on the cells because then you don't screw the cell references up. I'm also going to encourage you to always use cell references. We're using Excel now so that we don't ever have to retype 80,886, 85,000. You want to use that number in something? You click on it. B5 is fundamentally 80,886. And let's add, hitting plus on my keyboard, that one, plus that one, plus that one. So, I mean, when I hit enter here, and that's what I'm going to do when I'm in a formula. Do not go clicking anywhere else. When you're done putting stuff in a cell, always hit enter. If I were to click down here, it'll change my last cell reference from E7 to something else. Okay, so you, clicking in Excel is telling Excel. It's providing instruction to Excel on what you want to put in there next. So if you're done, just hit enter. And I get the same exact number because this is an easier way to add a collection of cells together than this. And Sam would mark that wrong, by the way. That's not what you want to do. So a basic sum function, let's delete this and rebuild it ourselves together, okay? Because I know that's not in the instructions, but we're going to try it anyway. We know we're doing something mathematical. We're doing some kind of problem we're solving, so it has to start with equals. The difference is, instead of adding all these up, think, of, think about it this way. Think if I had like 400 of these here. You would never want to add all those up. Instead, you can use functions that are built into Excel that will take the first one, put a colon in between it, and, and list the last one, and add up everything in between. And sum is the simplest and most commonly used function, so we're going to use that. We'll type out sum, and we'll start a parenthesis. So whenever you have a function, it's always followed by a parenthesis to tell you what the function is going to use. And I know most Canadians refer to that as a bracket. Uh, I don't know how this happened. Like It's like half of Canada and every single public sector teacher calls that a bracket. That is not a bracket. No one in the rest of the world refers to it as a bracket. This is a, is a squiggly bracket. This is a square bracket. Those are brackets. This is a chevron bracket. I mean, and I guess if you were going to just have a straight up bracket, it would just be that one. But this, guys, is not a bracket. Here, I wanted to highlight the parentheses, this thing right here is definitely not a bracket. It is a parenthesis, and that's what most functions use. We'll use other characters later on in the term, but for right now we're just doing a basic sum function. And if you want the sum function to go from this cell to this cell, you can click on it or type it in, whatever, but you, you've got to use the cell reference. And then put a colon in, and then grab the last cell, 
and it picks all of them up in between, and then you can just hit enter. You really don't even have to close the parentheses, and you get the answer. So that's a basic sum function. I mean, you should type in the parentheses just as a best practice, but once you have that, you don't have to do that five, six more times here. I think it's uh, five more. You can just copy it down, and the instructions for this next step that I really I took a little bit of a departure there, they want you to use the autofill or the fill handle to copy it down. So the way to do this is to grab this little tiny box in the right corner, click. Now I haven't unclicked yet, I clicked. While I'm still clicked, I'm going to drag, and then I'm gonna let go, and it copies that sum function all the way through. Now this is where I'm gonna throw one more thing in there, and then we're just gonna finish the instructions. With Excel, you need to know there are three basic ways uh, you can, behaviors you can have with a cell with your mouse, okay? The first one is, I want to make all these bold, for example. So click somewhere in a cell and then drag over and unclick and you've highlighted. That's highlighting a range. It, this will occur anywhere you click inside a cell. And then where you unclick, it'll pick up all that as your highlighted range. A range is just a collection of cells, okay? What we did here, if you grab just there and click and drag, that was copying using the fill handle, which is autofill. And then one more, if we wanted to move this, for example, admissions analysis, if we wanted to click and move it, you could anywhere on the border, you can click except where the fill handle is. And that would be moving, like that. And I'm gonna undo that because I wanna have that in the right place. So a few different actions you can have with cells. Um, let's move on to the next step and get this thing done. So in cell B11, enter a formula that uses the sum function to total the range B5 to B10. Use autofill to fill it in. So all the stuff I just taught you, we're gonna use that now. So let's go to B11, okay, B11, sum, wait a minute, Mike, what are you doing over there? Well, here is a button that will just build the sum function for you, and it will also pick up the closest adjacent range. Now, be careful, because whenever you use the auto sum button, it might pick up numbers that aren't supposed to be in your range. You have to check the range and make sure it's right. It is right, so I'm just going to hit enter. So even though I just taught you to build the function manually, I'm now showing you that you can use the auto sum button and it will do it for you. In fact, check this out. You know how it says use autofill and drag it over? And how far over do we have to go? Uh, F11, so it does want to go all the way to F. You can go one step further. You can highlight all these cells first and hit auto sum. And it, assuming you have the same range every time, which you do, so you're lucky here, it will auto sum all of those for you. So very, guys, very simple. And you're gonna start like rocking through this thing turbo style because you learn a few things like that and all of a sudden everything gets faster. Edit the text in A13, so it reads projected admissions 2016 and 19. Uh, okay, so it's got the right stuff there. We just have to add the word projected in front of it. So type projected, throw a space in there, hit enter. Enter the information shown in table one. So we're gonna enter some data ourselves, okay? Uh, and this is all going to occur, it looks like, in um, in row 20. Yeah, I guess we're missing the other category. So we're going to do 30, and you can cut and paste each of these, but when you just have a single item, it's, it's probably faster to type it. 30277, okay. Uh, if I hit tab, I'll go right to the next cell. It's just as powerful as hitting enter, except tab will let you go over instead of down. Okay, enter always sends you down. So, uh, 31791, lots of little things I'm throwing in there. And remember, you can pause my videos and go back at any time. 33380, if you mess any of these up, Sam will mark you wrong, so make sure you get them right. 35049. You know, some of you that have used Excel have probably already shut my video off and finished the whole case in like five minutes. I know this first case is a little easier, but I have to start a little lower so that we can all learn together and once we start doing the harder cases believe me you'll all be stuck in the videos for a bit so I just want to make sure we all start learning the basics so use autofill to fill the range F16 to F20 using the formula in F15 so it's already in there so we're just going to fill it down just like we did last time okay and then again we're going to do the sum function across so I mean this thing starts getting really fast right I can just highlight across just like I did before hit the auto sum, boom, 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 they all calculate. 
Wow, I've done a lot of stuff here. I should probably hit Control S. Oops, not Control A, which is Control here. That's highlight all. Control A. I don't know what I hit that just highlighted that chunk. That was weird. Control S. Okay, saving. Um, hide the grid lines. So we don't want to see the grid lines. This is a nice little handy view option that people never use, that use Excel all the time, but it just cleans stuff up. Go to view, and there should be a little box here for grid lines. Uncheck it. Grid lines are now hidden. Change the orientation of the worksheet. So just to make sure, you know, this doesn't print off to the side of another sheet or something, go to page layout and change orientation to landscape. So a lot of this basic stuff at the end is more like you could do the same thing in MS Word. So this might be a review for a bunch of you. And then change the document view to page break preview. So anytime you change anything in page layout like landscape or orient like orientation to landscape, it changes the view. So then you can go back um, here to view and you can look at it for page break view so you can see like where the breaks are. So here it's gonna give you a break. It looks like, yeah right there and tells you which page is which. If you wanted to have it all go on one page, which I think makes more sense for this much data, don't do this, it'll mark you wrong, but I'm just showing you how. Um, you can go here to sheet options, or page actually. Yeah, here. Go here. Scale the fit should bring it right up. Yeah, scale the fit. Go here and, and make it fit one to one. So however much crap you fit on a worksheet, you can always force it all to be on one page if you check that button. Uh, but I'm going to go back here because I don't want to start doing things it's not telling me to do because I want this graded properly by the computer. So at that point, I am done. Now, in most weeks, guys, okay, this was a very simple case. This is just to get you comfortable with Excel. I know I started to move a little quickly after I'd spent tons of time on these first few steps. That was for the beginners. If you've only used Excel a couple times, watch this video two or three times. Go through the case a couple times before you turn it in. Make sure everything's right. Once you know you've done everything properly, control S on your keyboard, save it, or even just go right up here and hit close, and it'll say, oh, wait, you got to save this thing. And yes, I'm going to save it. And yes, I do know where it is. So when I go here, back in Sam, I browse, I go pick up the file from my desktop. Oh, oh don't move that. Don't move that. What am I moving here? Okay, I don't know what that was, but I think I managed to not move it. Okay, good. Sorry. Uh, pick up the file from my desktop. I hit open. I hit submit. If the file name is correct, I will have no issues and I will get three green check marks, right? About. Come on, quicker. Come on. Okay, you know what? It just bumped me back to this page because I timed out. That may happen to you a lot. Like it logs you out automatically because you, it doesn't want any cheating going on or something. So just log back in. Go back to the activity list. Go back to week one case. Hit start. You've already gotten the files. Just go right to browse and go and pick it up. So I'm glad that happened because that shows you that if you leave the login or the, sorry, the, the upload box sitting there for too long, it will bump you out. It's no big deal. Just log back in again. Then when you hit submit, you should see the three green check marks. No problem. There you go. So this is the good thing that you see at the end if the file is named properly. If you see something up here that says it can't submit, the file's name's not right, it'll, it'll probably still be on the upload box. You just got to go fix the file name. So now I'm going to show you how this works at the end, okay? As soon as you submit a case or a quiz or whatever it may be, you can go to reports and you will see the grade for it. So you can see it's, it's already graded. Wow, that was fast. Um, that was it, it may not quite be that fast usually it's a minute or two or maybe three or four minutes sometimes if the system's really busy I'm doing this on a weekend so there's nobody else using it so that's probably why it was so quick so I can go here and this one you don't have to save as or anything you can open it right up because if you're gonna make changes you're gonna do it to the original file you're just gonna look at this file to see what you did wrong but you should go back to the original file and change it because this one's gonna have a really funky name so okay I didn't do too bad I got a 93 that's pretty good. So if you were happy with a 93 and you're, you know, you're in such a hurry that you can't make one little fix and go change it and get 100, that's fine. And this is the grade that your professor would transfer to FOL, assuming this was done by the deadline that your professor gave you. That's how this works, okay? Same with the quiz. But the quiz, it's just got to be a 70 and then you get 100. 
Um, so I'm not happy enough with a 93. You know what? That was a really easy case. It's worth 4% of my mark. I want to get 100 on this thing. What did I do wrong? Oh, right. Yeah, I typed this in wrong. And sometimes Sam is so picky that it even, it even marks you wrong for not having capital letters. So these reports are really helpful. If you go here, um, it'll even usually have a comment. See it? See the comment? See, see that little here? Enable editing. Okay, see that little red thing there? That's a comment that tells me, oh, this is where you got an error. If you hover over it, it'll tell you what you did wrong there. So I'm not going to play around on this file. This is my graded file. I'm going to go back to the original file. I'm going to open it up. I'm going to go to, now leave it on this view. I know it looks a little funky compared to what you're used to, but just leave it there. Go here, add the S in the right place. Take a look at it, make sure it's right. Hit enter, save the file. Close it up and submit it again. You only have that one thing wrong, so it's very easy to go fix. Guys, do not let it, don't have one mistake like that and not get the 100. Like, come on. Go back to the activity list. Sorry, I want you guys to get good grades. Go to week one case. Hit start. Go to the browse thing again, because you're already, you've already done all the other stuff. You don't need to download it. Get the case. You know you saved it. Don't leave it open and not save the changes. Save it and close it. Hit open. Hit submit, wait another couple minutes, and you'll have your 100%, I'm sure. And if maybe you had like a 60 and you get it up to an 80, it's still better than leaving it at a 60. These cases should all turn out to be A's for you because, remember, for the first, well, for the first 20 minutes of this video, I was talking about everything that has to do with setting up your SAM account and using it to work through the course. But these videos and, and your professor's lectures in, in the live setting will show you everything to do on these cases to get a hundred percent of these steps correct. So why the heck wouldn't you guys all get A's on these things for the rest of the term? Just guys, come on, do it. Get them in on time and get the A's and you're going to be happy you did and you're going to learn Excel in the process. Uh, so let's go to reports and see if it's there yet. Yeah, the system is flying tonight, so it's already there. So this is the new one I turned in, 7, 11 p.m. Let's check it out. Open up. Come on, come on. 100, 100, 100, 100. Yes. See? I'm worse than you guys, and I'm not even getting grades for this. So this is what you want. You want the 100. If you don't get it the first time, fix the stuff you made mistakes with and turn it back in. If you're using a Mac, this is where... Now, nothing on this case would be affected by a Mac. It's when you get into the, the theme colors and the theme settings that you might miss, like seven points here, five points there. Tell your professor and make sure they know and we'll make those adjustments. Otherwise, you guys should all be pulling hundos on these cases, guys. It's not that hard to do, okay? Granted, the first week's case is pretty easy, but you know, just follow along with the videos. And really, even when we get to the really complicated functions and we're dragging and dropping columns and rows out of pivot tables, if you're following along and you're trying it yourself, you're practicing, it shouldn't be that much harder. Okay, so that's our second video. Uh, for our week one lecture. Um, now that we've gotten through all the basic stuff in the course, how everything works, we covered this, 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 and we completed the week one case. From now on, the lectures will just show you the case completion from that week. If you forget what's going on with your SAM account or when you have to buy the key code, you can always go back to these videos. But remember, get your key code sometime before week three. At some point during or near the end or whatever, around week three, it's going to ask you to, to punch it in, and then you better still have it and be able to find it then because it's not like the thing is free, okay? Um, that's it for this week. Uh, thanks for watching. Enjoy online learning, and I will see you guys uh, for the week two case lecture. Don't forget about your quizzes each week. You'll also have a quiz after the week two case, and I'll remind you in the next lecture. I'll see you later.